G'day everybody. Well, uh, this is a bit of a mystery video on this uh, very interesting little object I've got sitting here. This is a very small aviation roots blower, which I got off eBay the other day. Now, the guy who sold it to me, nor myself, have any idea on what kind of aircraft or engine this is actually used on, or what it actually does in an engine. He sort of sold it to me on a bit of a discount, as they found it in a uh, parts store. But, I had no, that again, there was no actual paperwork with it explaining what it sort of does, or there's no actual part numbers or anything on it either, so it's... It's quite a mystery actually, um, that's sort of why I'm doing this video, if anybody actually knows what this is for, please uh, put it in the comments because I'd love to uh, hear from somebody. But it's got lots and lots of little markings all over it, there's the most obvious one there. Unfortunately none of them actually do anything when I put them into, uh, into the internet to try to search for a data sheet or something, which suggests this could be a very old uh, pump from very old aircraft. I think it's come from Cardiff or something like that in the UK, that's where it was shipped from. So uh, it could even be World War II era for all I know, I'm really not 100% sure. My hand is shaking quite a bit, I'm trying to get a hold of those little numbers. There's numbers all over this thing, including there as well, and there's even numbers on the little lobes inside there, so somebody's had it apart and they've rebuilt it. Of course, I've had it apart before because there's only two little screws that actually hold it together. Is my camera going to focus again? There we go. It's got two little timing gears on the back here. I'm guessing there would have been some kind of cover over that full of oil, like a normal uh, roots blower would have. But unfortunately, that all of that's gone, whether it even had that. Could have been an oil-free version of it. But you can turn those over. There's two little... Uh, Tri 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 lobed rotors in there, if I can say that correctly, which you can sort of see the tips of. I'll uh, take this front off, which is sort of like the main bearing block for it. There's a front bearing and then a rear bearing, depending on which side's the front and the back. And then there's your input and your output, or it could be a reverse, but I'll undo those and we'll have a look inside. Okay, so here's basically what's inside this uh, little blower. I've taken the front end plate off, which has got uh, or started some nasty looking grease on it. Looks a bit like red lipstick. <laughs> Pretty horrible stuff. I don't actually know if it's toxic or not, so I'm not going to be touching it, even though I've got quite a bit of it on my hands already. But uh, it's probably just some aviation grade grease. There's two little uh, radial roller bearings up inside there, which go on the, the front here. And then these are the uh, the lobes, the rotors inside the uh, the housing. And the way these roots blowers work is they basically rotate around like this, and these lobes mesh with each other, a bit like gears, very crude form of gears. And as they're doing that, they're pulling air into these cavities here that they create between the two lobes and the casing, and then they basically wind the air around and then force it out through the, the discharge. Or it could even run in reverse like that. I'm not 100% sure at all on how it would run. But these are attached to these gears on the back. These are the timing gears. And their job is basically to stop the two rotors from touching as they're running. Although they're touching at the moment because the whole thing's slack. Because I've got all the other screws out of it. But normally when it would be together and in operation. that These wouldn't actually be touching each other. But there are a um, there is a pair of uh, tab washers on the back here as well. I've noticed, and also these locking uh, nuts. So I'm not actually going to try and take these off because in there there's probably going to be a set of thrust bearings to keep the uh, keep that end clearance from this end plate and the ends of the uh, the rotors. I've undo undone the back as well. Oops, my table. <coughs> Balances off balances on me. That's just the main casing. There's really not much to that. You can see the uh, the little grind outs there for where the uh, the air or fluid or whatever runs through this would pass. There's not much marks on it. There's a few marks from where I've been playing with it, but 
I don't actually know if it's been used or not. But here's the, the actual lobes up close. I can even still turn them around and show them meshing. Yeah, a little bit of play. But again, like I said, it's because I've got it all apart. They wouldn't normally, uh, they don't normally knock like that. There's some interesting mesh type stuff on it as well, maybe for oil or something. It could even be some kind of oil injection there as well to keep these uh, lubricated. But uh, it's very interesting. These are very, very similar in construction to a uh, rotary screw compressor. They work exactly the same way. I, um, my old job actually involved overhauling a lot of very large um, Micom rotary screw compressors. And they're a fascinating machine. The, uh, basically the way those work is those have a helical rotor. And they both mesh in, in between each other exactly like this, except they're helical, they're like a helical gear. There's no actual gears on the back, they're just driven by each other. And they work the same way, they're just compressing uh, refrigerant in the case that they were used in. But of course screw compressors are used in, uh, for they're very big in the air and compressed air industry and all sorts of other places. Carbon dioxide they use them in, they're, uh, they're a pretty incredible machine. But this is basically this is a very uh very small roots blower. I mean I'm probably not, not I'm sure a lot of you out there who actually own them that were used on the famous Thunderbolt and also the guys who've seen them in cars and things as the superchargers probably used to seeing them really big. But it's uh, I've seen some massive ones in my time that are big enough for where the casing's basically big enough that you can sit in it sort of thing when it's standing up like that. That's how big they get. But um it's a very, very small one. Again, it's very clean. There's not many uh, score marks or anything left on, on it from it being run. I mean, there's a few little marks on the casing from uh, just where that grease is smudged, really. That'll probably all come off when I wipe that. But it's a uh, very interesting little bit of kit. I know my camera works so absolutely shoddy at the moment. But... Obviously, whatever it's been used in, it's been a uh, high-precision piece of machinery, especially in an aircraft where things are engineered to their tightest of tolerances. Where you cannot afford to have failure on them. But, uh, that goes on like that. And this goes around the other way, if I can bugger it up. And that just goes on there like that because it doesn't really want to at the moment because I think the shim's in the way. If we can get that on. A bit of a there we go. That's how it goes together. Again, as you saw, there's the two little screws on the front and the back here. I'm guessing there must be something to go over that, whether there's actually even a drive gear, because there's no... Uh, I can't actually see any way of um, driving it because there's no shaft or anything sticking out the front here. There's just that little stub. So I'm guessing it's probably been driven off of the, uh, the gears here. But what I might have a go at is actually making a little coupling up to fit over that. So I can then direct drive it off a small electric motor. Although I'll probably have to well grease these gears. Because I'm guessing these are normally be uh, in a casing full of oil sort of thing. It's probably, I'm not actually sure whether there's any more to this or whether this is just it. But the fact that there's no actual bolts or anything for there either. Sort of looks incomplete, but other than that, this is just how it came. That's just how they uh, how they found it. And with this bit of mesh around there, maybe for air cooling or something. I'm not sure, but that's a very very small roots blower. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Little little marks are made by moving it. Hope you found that interesting. And uh, if anyone does actually know what this is used in, what kind of aircraft or what it's um, application is and please uh, put it in the comments love to hear about it thanks for watching